and welcome back. Welcome back. What's up, Mike? How are you, bud? I'm good. I, so I just to uh, set the stage, I am joined. This is what I love about Microsoft and our devices and our services. Anywhere, anytime, any place. I am sitting in the basement of my son's house on vacation visiting with family. But I did have a couple hours blocked today to meet with you and another uh, couple of meetings I have. And I'm actually laying on a fold out couch right now. Um, but we're live. And and I love our backgrounds. Oh, I love them. I love them. I, what, what is that background, Mike? I mean, I'm just out that of curiosity. Is, when you set up Windows 11 on your machine, <laughs> like I have, and you have, um, that's the default background. Comes Wait, up. I thought Microsoft said that they weren't going to do a Windows 11. That's what I, or did we? I believe there was a, a little kind of thing they did, a press online announcement. Satya was out there and uh, showing mm -hmm. some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, no, I think my excitement, you know, again, this is the Surface podcast is because one the guy that I really kind of got me into this field of Surface and devices and Windows, Panos Panay, head of Windows and devices now, yeah. snap, 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 was the person that made the announcement. So, yeah, you know, I'm super excited to to hear sort of that journey as we move into a bigger world. Um, and, and, and part of it, just to be fair, uh, Michael, is when you look at Surface, it wouldn't be anything without Windows. It just it really couldn't. No, you know? I mean, it's the hardware and the and the, uh, the operating system. It's how that OS is lit. You have hardware that really lights up and takes advantage of what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm excited because, mm -hmm. you know, one other thing, I got my updated personal computer last week. So I've been running an old, old machine that literally said ready for Windows 8. <laughs> I mean, that's how old it was, right? And I did some updates to tweak it and stuff. But uh, this last week, oh, it's not going to show. I got a. Uh, it's it's it is here. There we go. Oh, I thought I thought you disappeared for that. You know, for those that are listening to the pie, I thought you disappeared, but it, I disappeared. You put that amazing amazing book in front of it, and that book sort of took over the the book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did it show when when I was covering my face? Well, no, it, it just showed your background because it went okay. blank. Yeah, <laughs> it's. But I've got the uh, Windows. Uh, I've got a Surface Laptop Three, um, and it's all set up and ready for when that eleven drops on the public. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I hear you. I hear you. I'm super excited. Um, I, I think there's a lot of press, a lot of noise going on around this. Um, I think the excitement for us and for, for you as well is it really means that developers, it means that the consumers, it means that the end users, the trainers, they all get a chance to essentially look at what Microsoft is doing to optimize the workspace yeah. to aut optimize how they're using the solutions, um, I, and so I'm I'm super excited. I know you are. Yeah. Um, it, it's al al almost sort of a refresh, and I, you know, I, I actually kind of thought, well, maybe this is happening to reinvigorate the economy, especially with the the, the chip and glass shortage. You know, the you know the 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 need for us to continue to evolve, need need for us to continue to innovate. This is part of that. And again, this isn't something that happened overnight. They've been no. talking about this for a while. Uh, and so it was amazing that it happened the way it has. You know what I mean? I, I do. And I think, you know, I was just excited like when they, uh, you know, there'd been people leaking out supposed, you know, screenshots and different stuff. And I was watching. But then when they actually showed it and really confirmed and then we're showing you know, some of the things that I was thinking about, and then it was fun. And this, I'll tell you, this was me on an internal, as we watched it on my team, we're watching it. And I was like, you know, with the, the bar down in the middle and people like, oh, it's, a, and I was like, that is all about optimizing <laughs> for multiple <laughs> screens, right? For different yeah. screen layouts and stuff. I said, because that goes to all kinds of form factors and that's where it's mm. really optimal. And then they started showing it on like a tablet view and the views, you know, Windows 10 had done a nice job when you undocked and, you know, like I can do on my Surface book here and did things. 
But when they started showing on a tablet view some of the different views, I was like, that is slick. They've really finally just nailed that native tablet experience. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. only thing, though, is, you know, that really bums me is apps. That's where, you know, my beloved Windows phone went bye bye and stuff because they didn't have the apps. And I'm like, you know, if we only had the apps and then what? Yeah. Literally a minute later, he says, and hey, we're running Android apps. And I was like, bah! yeah, I, I did the same thing. And, and I think it's almost like, uh, you know, the never you fear. There's always something in there for, for yeah. other folks. I mean, my, my excitement is really watching Panos go from the Windows, the Surface world, and really ask, okay, what's going to make these devices pop? What's it, yeah. what's, what is it going to take to really optimize the experience an end user has, a developer has, on, a, on, on, a de on any device, you know, whether yeah. it's a low-end you know, low uh, device to a high-end processing device? How can we make that experience be much more powerful and so the ui itself um it just really kind of increases it the gaming itself looks better as you can see on the slide you know and really just the idea that you know it's endorsed from satya on down even chat like one of my m most exciting moments was when you know they were showing it and showing it. i'm like yeah what's new what's new and then they showed how teams although it was already in the product teams was essentially integrated at the consumer level so yeah. now it doesn't matter if you have a mobile phone. It doesn't matter if you have an iPad. It doesn't have, matter if you have an Android. It doesn't matter if you're on a Surface Hub. You're going to get that experience regardless, you know. Um, and you can you call anybody from anywhere, you know, with any device. That's that's yeah. the beauty of it, you know. It, it is. And, you know, it's funny because when you just said that about the Teams piece, because one of the things I, I harp on when I talk to my customers in healthcare, and here's my my iPhone running Microsoft Teams <clears throat> is how the experience from that chat aspect is really iPhone like like with iPhone Messenger my thing buzzes it makes noise I can do alerts I can multi you know send things multi party and all kinds of stuff Teams has been doing the same experience on my device on Android devices for a long time mobile but now we're extending it with and we announced, you know, the whole consumer. So like on my 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 home laptop over here, I have teams running off of my live dot com account um, mm -hmm. with with all that fidelity and stuff. So now we're taking and saying, look, we don't care if you're on your PC. You're on a Mac. You're on an Android, you're on an iPhone. And. 10, 11 is really bringing that home to just make it all right there. Right. And I think it actually answers that question uh, of how do we move forward as, as, as Microsoft, as it pertains to a PC on every desktop. Now it's a PC on every device, maybe even two device, any device that you have will, will allow you to actually communicate with other people. I think that's the beauty, and you know, I'll, I'll share with you one experience, and then I'll we'll, we'll do a really quick, you know, yeah. two-minute video on on Windows 11. I had a customer that was basically, you know, we were talking about the Duo and how great the Duo was, and guess what? Their number one concern was what? The number one concern was they were uh, uh, they, they, their shop was essentially with the fruit store, the, the Apple, you know, so they right, right. They were a big yep. app because that's what they were used to. But the main reason that they were saying this is because their end users, their consumers, the patients communicate with with their families and loved ones using an iPhone or an iOS device, which right. is the essential expectation. Now, with this, knowing that we have a market, a, a ridiculous large market of uh, even an older population that uses Android, that yep. uses, you know, Windows devices, that seamless communication can happen on a device, any device, and may even fill that gap in to support those people that don't necessarily, you know, have an iPhone or have an Apple device. They just use whatever device they have. They'll mm -hmm. make the connection and continue the conversation, including the Duo. So yep. I, I, I'm super excited about it. I think it's a great way to go forward. Um, and it should be, it should be a good, le good lesson for everyone. Now let's watch this really quickly. Yeah.
Can you hear it? Is it? As simple, but, you know, sufficient, you know, nothing crazy. Um, it, it, you know, again, my excitement is there's so much you can do with these devices. Notice, as, Mike, you kind of, you know, alerted, um, alluded to this, the cool new taskbar. Now, yeah. you know what I love about this taskbar? They did a survey of all of the different types of applications that people generally use, the, the applications that they use, you know, Explorer, Task Manager, Windows desktops, even widgets, right? Mm -hmm. Microsoft Edge for browsing, the Microsoft Store, um, and then the Teams, uh, you know, is it Talk app? I don't know, Mike, you're the Teams expert. Um, what, what do we call that? The, just the Teams app? Yeah, Teams. Exactly. So all sort of, just, we'll call it chat for now, um, all built into some, you know, a simple bar across the bottom, even search. Yeah. Now you don't have to guess where you're going. You just go straight to the bottom in the middle of your screen and you click the option you, you want. Right. That much easier. Now, here's the catch. If you want to flip it back to what you had before, you have the option to take everything back to the left, uh, left corner. Hey, I know Mike's like, hey, don't do it, don't do it. But, but you know, sometimes as you sort of see the, the progression of where we're going, everything is sort of centered around you centered around the individual, making sure you have access to what you're looking for. That's amazing. That's what excitement is. All of your recent files is there too. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, we, we still give like, so I saw some threads and people like, oh, and they're letting people do this, this, that. you know, look, we, we're all about choice. A lot of things in life, people just tell you what you're gonna do and how it's gonna be. We're like, look, we're, we care about the person. We care about mm -hmm. your style of computing. So while we are bringing it forward, and if you think about that center taskbar, which is in alignment with your mobile devices, with your tablets, it's, it's bringing more of that, right, all together. If that's just, you're like, look, that's too much for me right now, <laughs> that's fine because mm -hmm. we're about choice. We'll let you yep. have it where you want it. Agreed. And I'll let you in on a little secret, Michael. Yeah. I have a, I'm on my Surface Hub. I'm running Windows 11 on the Surface Hub. Wait, so whoa, that, whoa. Dude, you're on the Hub with it? On the Hub, Windows 11. I mean, it just takes it to the next level. Even with that, what, what I'm able to do is now do the snap layouts. So now, imagine this 50 inch Hub device. I yeah. can now take content, put one in this section. One in that section and one in that section. I split it up this way and have, you know, um, content in different windows and be more efficient. Imagine using that in the healthcare space, uh, whether it's virtual rounding, whether it's information, you know, in, in the front desk and having that available for you to basically see what's going on um, and, and communicate with the patients or even, yep. you know, stay connected with the news, the latest news. To me, the snap layouts makes it easy to move things around in the screen and yeah. simplifies the overall experience. You know what I mean? Totally, because you know how many of us have tried to just get something to snap to one side or the other, and we're fumbling. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, serious? That's me. Well, maybe that's just me. <laughs> but, uh, just moving it over just a little bit. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. I mean, and totally. then you snap it all the way, and it just takes the whole screen. You're like, no, yeah. I only wanted a corner. You know? Yeah, I, I do the this same makes thing. It easy, and I'll, I'll get just one other thing, and this is again just because I like aesthetics. The little they've even rounded like I got the uh, I'm on the preview in office right on my personal mm -hmm. computer as well as this one, so I'm getting little rounded corners now on my app. So everything's kind of fitting with that just clean aesthetic. It's awesome, and yeah, yeah and the no, apps are just it's it's changing the way we we do we work. It's changing the the expectation of what we expect to see. And that's what I love about it. It's just yeah. really sort of allowing you to imagine what's next, right? So that snap layout is really cool on any device. Imagine having it on even a, um, 
uh, you know, a, a tablet type device. You get yeah. that option as well. So lots of changes, lots of uh, opportunity here. But you know what even makes it cooler with the whole process? What? I can do it. I can have Snap groups. Guess what Snap groups are, Mike? Guess what those I, are? I'm going to let you tell me. <laughs> so Snap groups <laughs> saved, is essentially. Right? Yeah, exactly. So if you if you have a monitor, you're connecting it to a se separate monitor, I can actually you know disconnect from the monitor, use it on my mobile device or my tablet, um, my two-in-one device, and have it reset to whatever I need to. When I go back to my office or back to my home screen, plug the monitor back in, it remembers all those settings. It remembers those configurations I had on monitor one, two, and four, and it just goes right back. Which Tell is different cool. than I've been having up until now because I have two big monitors plus my Surface Book, and whenever I unplug and come back, everything's still here, and I have to <laughs> drag and, okay, where do I want what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so so yeah. You, you can see that change, and I think that's cool too. So disconnecting, reconnecting to different monitors, you can set those settings, and it'll all automatically remember it. And that's that's cool, especially for people that want to get work done. You don't want to spend time trying to figure out how to change the windows. But the coolest, probably one of the coolest features I like, I can contact any of my friends. They don't have to be work people. Michael, it doesn't have to be work people. No, I, can, I know. I can call. Alex, Tom, Sarah, I'd be like, dude, that's, you know, chat. And yeah. I don't, I, all I have to do is tell them, install the Teams app on their phone or on the mobile device or even on an Apple device, and we can just have a conversation. This is equivalent of FaceTime. But it's on better. any device. It's better. Exactly. I'll tell you why. So my my son and I and well, our family, we were all on iPhones. My son and his wife became traders. <laughs> and they, they ended up getting uh, Pixel phones. Uh huh. But guess what? We can't do anymore. I <laughs> can't do the FaceTime anymore. FaceTime. Yeah. So with this, now we're going to extend it. We finally were like, okay, let's put on, let's put on the Teams app and we'll do it on the phone. But, but then, you know, hey, now it's extending it across. What I love though is, look, they're mousing over. They haven't even had to open up the full Teams client here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're just right. jumping straight in. Yep. That's right. Love it. And, and it just makes it so much easier. So yeah. as long as you communicate to your friends what we're doing with Teams, your colleagues, get them to install the app. Because, again, people aren't necessarily like they, – they don't always understand what it means to install an application. When you right. say Zoom, they don't even realize that they have it installed in their, on their phones, on their devices. Yeah. So, you know, I think the key here is getting people to understand that what Teams is doing is it's giving you a much richer experience across a multitude of devices – regardless of the device you're using, and a great yeah. experience, right? Um, and it also gets you used to the chat capabilities, the group chat capabilities, the security that's built into Teams and Microsoft. Yep. I mean, I can just say security and, you know, we're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah. I, I was talking to my friend of mine. And he's like, well, you know, I had a buddy that had an issue with Zoom. I'm like, what was the issue? Oh, we, he had a Zoom bomb. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I've never heard of a Teams bomb before. You know, so uh, again, for those of you guys that are in love with Zoom, I get it. it it's done, it, it's easy to use, but until you've gotten Zoom bombed, you may want to think twice. Well, and the thing is, we bet we know we understand that. Our emphasis, you know, to be blunt, during this pandemic, was on, and it, it's funny because we're in that space, right? Mm -hmm. Who was front and center with needing to be able to rapidly roll out secure? telehealth and other things mm -hmm. healthcare and life sciences yeah so yep. who was the premier provider to make sure it was done securely with compliance and all that for patient doctor privilege and all that? we were now we're taking though that instead of going from user friendly and trying to make it into secure and all that we started from that basis but now we're making it just this again as a part of this whole Windows, right, revolution, mm -hmm. making it user friendly, making it any device friendly for not only work, but for home. Agreed. 
You're you're absolutely right, and I think that's a, that's going to be the excitement is, is yeah. seeing that transition happen. Um, but you know, you, you talk about using it for home Witches. and using it <laughs> exactly. You know, um, there there are certain things that you, your family, your kids, my kids might need on on uh, on the, on the device. You might need to know the temperature. You might need to know what's going on with your stocks. You might need to know. You know what's the le- re- you know recent photos that you've taken? What's the latest news? What meetings coming up? What tasks do you have coming? Yep. You know what's the story that's going on in the news? All of that can be essentially put together in a simple widget. Now, yep. spoiler alert: we had this sort of functionality in Windows 10. Yes. But what I love about what we did with Microsoft is we we optimize it so you have a a, more, a richer experience to the point where you can change and move things around the way you want to have it, yeah. the customization. This ties back into what, Mike, you said earlier. We're doing it because we want you to have the ability to change and uh, modify it so that it, it fits your needs, your experience within the, you know, within the uh, guidelines. So yeah. that's what I love about widgets. Yeah, and we're again, we're just making it intuitive. And, you know, like, again, I'll go back to what you just said, how we've had it. I remember the first time I experienced widgets was on a Windows 7, uh, oh shoot, what were we calling them? Slate, Windows Slate device from Samsung, Mm -hmm. which I still have two of. I still have two of these Samsung Windows uh, Slate devices, which now, you know, we call them tablets. Uh, But I had widgets and I had some of this there and i thought ah we were like ahead of our time then right so things mm-hmm. were but now we're at a, again when we talk about the mobility world and apps and all that stuff we're bringing the things that people expect to any form factor exactly exactly and that that is the excitement really yeah. that change is what we what we've been looking forward to um but with that change we're also doing things with the store so that where you get your apps where you get your your applications are easier, so we've grouped them into trending apps. You can have access to the things that you're looking for. Um, we've tied it into the, some more of the commercial experience, like you can see Spotify is yep. on there. Um, you know, any of the uh, extensions that you're looking for, any of the uh, app games that you're used to. So a lot of Xbox has, in, has been integrated into this, and I, I think you saw that announcement about Xbox. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, how they're bringing that in cloud gaming now, right? So that, you mm-hmm. know, I can I can play things that were previously only available via my Xbox. Mm-hmm. Play mm-hmm. here. And uh, yep. again, with the store now bringing in the Android through, we have a partnership. Again, we don't try to reinvent everything. We, we're like, look, the people who are doing this, doing it right, let's work with them. And and that's what I love with Satya. I love that, right? So like yep. we're not trying to make our own app store and now all of it. there's a huge Android app store through Amazon. You, you kind of beat me to it. Oh yeah. well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, he's there right it is. there. How do, yeah. how do you say it? Uh, uh, you'll you'll be the uh, I'll be the lion. You'll be the what? You want to be the Tin Man or you want to be the Straw Man? <laughs> the Scarecrow. We're not a Kansas symbol because I'm not Dorothy. I can't be Dorothy. Right. I'm sorry, Michael. So there you go. <laughs> but, but, but I, I don't think we're the, in Kansas anymore. Yeah, but that's the that's the beauty of it, right? Like, I'll tell you. So I'm big. I, I'm all about social media. One of the channels I use, it's not really my work one though, that I'm I'm heavily involved with on a personal level, mm-hmm. is Instagram. Yep. But, Instagram has not had an app with full fidelity and capability for the PC. And so I've been forced to do all my social video editing, picture editing, everything here on my phone. And that's been okay, but it makes some of the stuff to be blunt. It makes it difficult because the real power is on my PC, especially for video editing and taking advantage of PC apps that really mm-hmm. you know are dedicated. But now I can do that. I can upload and do everything right from here, just as if I was here. here. Yep, that, that's the excitement. So again, you know, now that we have that ability, it's almost sorts of branches us out into another world because panels have this vision of, you know, it's inclusivity. We talk about diversity and inclusion, 
but right. including app diversity inclusion, you know, being able to open up and share application access across different uh, yep. vendors. Um, you know, I think really the idea is that Android has been very open to the idea of collaborating and really putting together a way for people to have access to what they're looking for. That app store is great. So yep. imagine the two. You have access to Microsoft apps. Um, you have access to Android apps. It's just like What's running what? your uh, Fire Stick. If you have a Fire Stick, you can put it in there. You'll have Disney. You'll have HBO. You'll have Netflix. A HBO Max. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Hulu. It doesn't matter, right? At that yeah. point, you have access to what you're looking for. And that's the key is really being part of the ecosystem. Um, Microsoft and, and, and the Microsoft team uh, had, you know, on the Windows side has really done a great job of essentially diversifying their ability to connect into other platforms, yeah. right? So that's, that's the core of it. But there's so much more. There's so much more, Michael, and I think you know this. You can see this. We got you know 40% smaller updates. You got Office themes, uh, which will match your Windows themes. It'll yeah. just basically look like the same thing. Um, of course, we have hardware requirements because we don't want you to running running this on your Texas Instruments. I don't know how many of you guys remember Texas Instruments. You know, do 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 do. I think I still might have one right, laying around. Um, um, and then you see some of the improvements on chip chipsets, Intel, AMD, and others, and a little bit of nerdy stuff. You know, TPM chips have to be a certain, uh, you know, configuration. You can't have right. 1.2. You've got to have 2.0. This has been uh, eight, nine years since we've been talking about right. this. Uh, but, well, that you just brought up a great point. So I saw a lot of people, you know, getting, well, their requirements are going to be really steep and blah, blah. I went on the, the you go, to, just go to, Microsoft.com, look up Windows 11. I mean, they have a link right off the homepage, right? Go there. And it tells you the hard. We do have new hardware requirements. They are not that steep. They are not yeah. that steep. People are like, nope. oh. I'm like, no, but, and, and if you're running an old device, you should probably think about upgrading that device. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so, so, so that's, that's really the, the story here. Um, and that's my excitement. And, you know, I'll end on this, right? So this is ni 1985. What, wh where were you in 1985? In 1985, <laughs> I built my first computer. I will say this. Wow. My first computer. I was going to build a DOS computer. I've been researching through 84. And uh -huh. then 80, when 85 hit, I had a Pentium 75. Rocking the first 3D graphics card with a whole two meg aboard it of graphics, pro, you know, of wow. graphics memory. It was the Diamond wow. Edge 3D, had Sega controllers for playing uh, very cool playing games. But it's a we're, so, I mean, it's been a world of difference. <laughs> okay, so to my defense, in 1985, I was somewhere on the island of Oahu living. And hanging out at the beach. Dude, I didn't know anything about computers. What were you doing in Oahu? <laughs> That's Which where I lived just to figure out. Where in Oahu? Laie, North Point, near so, Kahuku. So yeah. I so <laughs> I spent uh, half of fifth grade uh, living right off of Kaneohe Bay. Oh wow! Yeah, can, uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I went to Laie Elementary, but in 1985. You know, I was having the time of my life trying to figure out how to sure. enjoy the good, you know, the good I'm life. Sure you did. I don't know what made me move over here to the States, but it is what it is, it you is know. It. But <laughs> again, the, the excitement for, 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 for Mike and I really to sharing this with you is to basically say this is this is where we're headed. This is yeah. what's coming. We want you to be part of that embracing process, you know, <clears throat> and. You know, it's not ready for production yet, and we understand that. We are running the early previews, but they announced last week it would be made available as beta for people. So if you have machines for testing and stuff, you know, certainly go to Microsoft.com, look up Windows 11. We have a download for uh, the tool to check your machine, see if it's ready for the beta builds. You know, the stuff that we're doing in preview, we want to make sure you have an optimal experience. Um, mm -hmm. and that's this week. In fact, 
I just well, you can't see it again. I don't know if it, yeah, it's gonna. I, I, I have it on the update. I keep hitting refresh. We we believe you. We believe you, Michael. We believe you. I and and selfishly, I've actually installed it on at least you know seventy five to eighty percent of all of my you know few devices. So yeah. um, I'm I'm seeing the experience. Everything from a eight inch device all the way up to you know the fifty inch hub. I don't have an eighty five, but fifty inch hub. So uh, I'm super excited. So that's what we wanted to cover with you guys today. Um, that's Windows 11. Uh, you'll hear more about it. A lot of the discussions we'll have will cover, cover Windows 11 running on Surface devices, the story behind it, um, and then also share with you what you, if you're a healthcare provider, if you're working in you know, health and life sciences, what you can do to enhance the experience for your end users and for your IT staff. You know? So, yeah. With it's that. Exciting. Yeah, it's super exciting. It's, it's going to be a fun journey. Buddy. Exactly. So thank you guys for joining today. Uh, again, you know, keep keep uh, you know keep watching, keep asking questions. We really want to be here and share content with you. We look forward to seeing you on our next uh, uh, podcast. And uh, we'll we you know if, if there's something you want to hear on the next podcast, put it in the window below. But other than that, we're still going to be going through some of these devices and also talking a little bit about Windows 11 and Microsoft Teams. So. Thanks again for joining. Mike, anything, any last words? Just it's, it's an exciting time. It's a big. It is. Yeah, and it, you're going to see how this is going to then percolate and have benefits across the whole 365 suite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.